would there be any uh, situation where you would recommend vaccination for a child or a grown-up? See, I don't recommend vaccinations and I don't say not to vaccinate. I don't feel that that is my job and my position. Let me finish. <laughs> You know, I remember that I didn't just drop out of the sky. I worked in the field of vaccination, vaccinating patients for a long time. And after seeing what I've seen, my conclusion is that just like I went and did my own research and answered my own questions, because believe me, I had a lot of questions when I started to see what was happening. I thought, well, what about polio? That must be, you know, what about, why don't we see people with one leg shorter anymore? What? So I had a lot of my own questions to answer, and every question I, I answered for myself made me back more and more personally away from vaccines. Now, I would never tell somebody not to vaccinate. I'll tell you how healthy unvaccinated children are, though, but it's your decision and it's your choice and it's your responsibility to do your own research with as much of the available information that there is because you're the one that has to live with either a dead child from a disease or a dead child from a vaccine or a sick child from either one. Not me. You're the one that has to live with it. I believe in individual freedoms and, and choices made from as much of the available information as possible and not removing essential concepts from people sick children who are in the hospital have cancer and cannot get um, a, a vaccine i can my boy's not vaccinated and i can um, tell parents why mm -hmm. but not if they say i have a sick child i don't know what to answer okay the answer is that you go to the john hopkins cancer institute website and you download their page that's warning you that if you've had any uh, live viral vaccines that you shouldn't go anywhere near their cancer ward. So how many kids are walking around right now having sniffed a uh, live influenza vaccine or having had rotavirus vaccine and the shedding through the stool? Uh, how many measles, mumps, rubella vaccines? You know, we've got a lot of live vaccines. Uh, or inactivated, uh, sorry, oral polio vaccines in some countries, again, a problem. People who have Im immune system depression, they're not just susceptible to vaccine preventable diseases. So you can take your fully vaccinated child in there. And in fact, if you have a, a child that's fully vaccinated for influenza, even if they're not shedding virus from the vaccine, their immune systems are so much more set back and susceptible to influenza. So it's a completely backwards argument. If you look at um, I did a talk on herd immunity again when I was in, in another uh, country recently, and that will be on, on YouTube also. But if you look at the, say, the pertussis, the whooping cough, um, that vaccine actually makes the people who are vaccinated silent carriers. Whereas if you're recovered from pertussis, you've had the natural disease, they can't even culture bacteria out of your lungs if you're re-exposed. So this whole, I've got to protect the, the vulnerable children with vaccines, it doesn't make scientific sense. It doesn't make immunological sense. There's, a little, there's always a little grain of truth to these things that they say and that if your vaccine works, which they usually do for a short period after they're given, then you might prevent that particular disease to that cancer affected child. But that cancer affected child is also exposed to its own bacteria. That you, you can, they can become infected from their own intestinal bacteria. It happens all the time. Their own skin bacteria from viruses that there's no vaccine for. So those kids do need to be protected. But they, w the real question is, why are these kids have so much cancer today? Ask that 70 year old teacher how many you know, people they've known in their lifetime back then with kids with cancer. You know, today, cancer institutions with billions of dollars of funding are cropping up all over the earth. They're the most highly funded parts of most hospitals. And, you know, I think that that vaccinated, unvaccinated study really needs to be done because we need to also look at the rates of cancer between the vaccinated and unvaccinated and the medicated and unmedicated child. Thank you very much for an interesting presentation. Um, I had a daughter 18 years ago, and I did, decided not to vaccinate her. I didn't know it when I was pregnant with her, but I studied it and so on. And I found that she was not as sick as the other children in the kindergarten, except for one thing. She had the whooping cough. There she was quite sick. 
And since then, she's also had uh, less illnesses than her, uh, the same age as her. Mm -hmm. One thing that I was thinking back then, which may be just a lay person thinking it, and that's why I would like your comment on it, that was the fact that I was thinking, okay, I'm living now outside of Copenhagen. I don't see uh, polio or diphtheria or some of the other uh, illnesses around me. So why should I vaccinate my child being just a baby when I don't know her reactions really yet? Mm -hmm. So I just decided, okay, I won't vaccinate her now. I may do it later. I mean, is that, uh, is that a sound way of actually uh, looking at it or is it just me being an amateur? No, no. Um, you know, there are several aspects to vaccinating. And one of them, and remember I talked about how the infant immune system is programmed to be anti-inflammatory. Remember that? And if you put an aluminum-containing vaccine into that system, you're violating the natural um, status of that immune system. But if you wait until after two years, and I'm not saying to do that, I'm just saying that if you do, animal studies have shown that the, re the, the response is a much more normal vaccine response uh, and there, there are consequences to vaccinating early, according to a lot of these animal studies that are very well respected. And I talked about this in the infant immunity talk. So you can, you can sometimes get out of that problem by waiting longer to vaccinate. But as far as the autoimmune diseases and potential cancers or any other problems that are occurring as a result of vaccination, that, I don't believe that risk changes if you wait longer. You said something interesting about whooping cough, and that is that your child got whooping cough and it, and it was not good. And, um, you know, whooping cough is a terrible disease. You know, I don't, I don't mean by any means to make it light of whooping cough. I think it's like a really rotten bacteria that has a lot of uh, qualities that are just incredibly nasty. It puts out a force field that fools the immune system that it's not there. Uh, it has little s sticky things that hold on to the, you know, the inside of the lung. It makes a toxin that makes people really sick and vitamin C depleted. But if you go onto my website and you read the testimonials of people, many of which who have just read my, the, my document on how to treat vitamins, whooping cough with vitamin C, they didn't even need me. But I also have consulted with many people, some, of, some babies only two weeks old, and they got through whooping cough at home with treatment of vitamin C. So if you had known about vitamin C, most parents report that there's about a 50, immediate 50% 50 lowering of the cough. Now, not all, but the, the majority of parents that I work with, they're in, within one to two days, they're breathing, they're like, okay, I can handle this. Whereas when they first call me, the babies are turning blue and they're coughing and they're holding their breath and they're having trouble breathing. But you give vitamin C and you're basically neutralizing the toxins, you're, you're, you're giving the fuel to the white blood cells that they need in order to function, and you're providing anti antioxidants to the system, you're loosening up the mucus. It's, it's really, really very helpful. You can't prevent whooping cough with this, but now your child is immune for some 30 years afterwards, and then if they're re-exposed because whooping cough is everywhere, let's face it, you know, ha most of the people that call me say they were infected by a vaccinated person. So it happens all the time. And um, so the vitamin C treatment of whooping cough is essential, and it's essential to know how to use vitamin C for any illness whether it's a skin or respiratory or gastrointestinal, anything. It helps even with fever because it makes you not need that fever so much. So it's really important. But I think you're, I like that what you said and that you introduced yourself because I hear so many parents tell the same story and also parents who have, you know, older kids who are vaccinated and were really sick and then the, they kept having children and the younger ones aren't vaccinated and they're really well. And I don't believe that's just a coincidence. Where should one look to find solid scientific studies that shows that vaccines work the way they're, we are told they work? Because I haven't been able to find any. Give me, an, see, I don't like to just talk about vaccines. Like, give me a vaccine that you're thinking of. <laughs> um, for example, the measles that we're talking about. That the vaccine actually works. Yeah. That vaccine does work. I, don't, I never say that the vaccine doesn't work. No, I, I, I'm just the, curious. No, the measles vaccine, but that's why I ask you each disease, because some vaccines don't work. They don't work, they, they, yeah. And some the do. Pertussis, like, they obviously don't Pertussis work. works, it, it will, does work for a few months after it's given. You need four shots and to keep getting boosters for the rest of your life. 
I can't yeah. tell you how many children I know that are like 10 and 12 years old have had their four shots and, and as soon as and they wear off so quickly that then they get pertussis as older kids. So, but the measles vaccine works in the majority of people for about 20 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Good. Thank you. And then just a general comment inspired by what you said just a minute ago with ask this and this and this person. So uh, I got to know about this event through a Facebook group and just an invitation to maybe we can continue. I think we can learn a lot from each other to continue the dialogue on mm -hmm. the Facebook group mm -hmm. if that's um, a possibility. I don't know who's managing it, but just want to put it out there. Yep. I can recommend to be a member of Dansk Vaccinationsforum if you want to have a good place here in Denmark. We get so much. I've been there for 20 years or something. And all the time you get the newest uh, uh, information about vaccination. And the Facebook group, I'm on that Facebook group also. It gives a lot of, uh, yeah, it's so good. You can uh, write there and ask other uh, people about questions. Yes? The name of the Facebook is uh, vac Vaccinationsforum. Man skal være medlem af Vaccinationsforum, det gør man på deres hjemmeside, og så bliver man så inviteret til Facebook-gruppen. Masser af god viden at få. Well, you have this great forum to, you know, go through, and, and people, you know, through there, uh, I can answer questions if somebody has something that, you know, the people that are here can't answer. Thank you all for coming and staying this long day.